And it's kind of like, well, let's see how far we can go in faith. Let's see what, let's see how big God is. Because God never did small visions. He told Abraham, look at the stars of the sky. You're going to bless all nations. That's a pretty big vision. See, our biggest problem is we have two, we have such a big God, but he can only work through our vision of him. His only limits are what we limit him to. And most people are so busy, you know, in the squirrel cage running the thing, that they never dream. They never look at vision. They never say, what can God do? Let's find the most. You look at Elijah. And it was impossible for, for fire to come down from heaven. Not only that, he said, you know what? Let's make it harder. Pour water on it. Soak it up. I mean, just pour a lot more water. What was he doing? He wouldn't make it. He wasn't like us. What do we do? Well, we'd say, well, first off, we got to get dry wood. Get dry wood. If we get dry wood, then maybe fire will come from heaven and set it on fire. But not wet wood. Wet wood is not going to burn. So we want to. No, we we want to make it easy on God. You want a miracle? We got to set the atmosphere. No. You want a miracle? Make it hard on God. Get in the worst atmosphere you can get in. Why? Because that's where God shows off. You you know you want to make an impact in the city. Go to the worst part. Why? Get that worst sinner. Why? Because when he gets saved, everybody will know. Go after that one. Go after the biggest drug dealer. You know, become a thorn in his side. Always remind him, God wants you. God wants you. God's got better things for you. The path you're on is wrong. It's not good. It's not going to end good. Get him saved. Oh, that'd be impossible. That's where God starts. God doesn't start with the possible. He starts with the impossible. He doesn't even get, not that he sleeps, but I'll tell you this, if he did, he would sleep until you mention impossible. Then he'd wake up and say, oh, impossible? That's my specialty. Let's do that. But our problem is we're, we're afraid to step out. That's why you don't see a lot of working of miracles in the church. Why? Because we're afraid to step out and put ourselves on the line. And what we're doing is we're putting our reputation on the line as if that means something. So, just a couple more here. He says, actually, I think I just about quoted this. There is nothing impossible with God. All the impossibility is with us when we measure God by the limitations of our unbelief. If it's in the Bible, it is so. It's not even to be prayed about. It's to be received and acted upon. Inactivity is the robber which steals blessings. Increase comes by action, by using what we have and know. Your life must be one of going on from faith to faith. Stretch. I ask my people at our home church all the time, what is your faith project? What are you stretching your faith for? What do you believe in God for? What have you felt, what promise and what have you found? What is a need that you need to stretch? What is a need that you see that you can't meet? That you're going to believe God. And that's what we do. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly trying to stretch. Constantly stretching out. We went on GEB TV beginning of the year. I mean, it was, it happened almost overnight. And it was amazing. And they offered us these spots and my secretary said, here's the spots they got. And I said, how many? And they're like, 12. I'm like, 12 spots. Let's take them. She said, all of them? I said, yeah. And she said, okay. And, and guess what I heard in my head? All of them? Are you sure all of them? This is TV. I'm like, yeah, it's also God. Right? Why? I was looking to stretch and then we took those, and, and actually, I think it was 10 to begin with. Then there came some more, 12 more, or two more. And then uh, last week, just actually, just before I left, she said, they contacted us. They got three more spots. I said, we'll take them. She said, do you want to know how much they are? I said, doesn't matter. We'll take them. But yeah, I want to know. Give me the numbers, but we're going to take them. Why? Because God is limitless, and we're stretching, and we haven't found a boundary yet. And then we haven't found something too big for God yet. And now we're on 
GEB every day, Monday through Friday at 1 p.m. And then we have other spots throughout the day. And we're on Saturday. And we're, on Saturday we're on seven days a week now. And what, two months ago now, I guess, we weren't even on GB at all. I told them before long, they're going to have to change it to JGLM. Well, they're just going to keep taking more spots, right? So God is looking for the, the opportunity to show himself, to be able to show what he can do, but it takes faith to step into it. So all I'm trying to get you to do is realize God is big enough to meet whatever needs you've got. And if the only needs you have are yours, you're thinking way too small. My, most of the time, people say, how come my faith doesn't work? Because you only want to use it on yourself. When you start using it for other people, you'll be amazed. Listen, most of the time, I haven't prayed for finances literally in years. Why? Because I trust God. We see what he wants us to do. We move that direction. And he meets our needs. And we don't do the gimmicks and we don't do all the stuff and you know, we just don't do that. Why? Because God is our source. But, and we're trying, and this is one of the areas when I said, God, I want to be an inspiration. I want to be, I want to inspire people. And this is where he put us, in television, so that we can show other ministries. You don't have to beg. You don't have to send out begging letters and all that kind of stuff to make a, well, send your money or we're going to go off the air. No, trust God, you won't go off the air. Now, but it's the same thing in your life. You see people with needs, meet the needs. You'll be surprised. You might have a ministry there. What you start is just helping somebody turns into a ministry. And you find out that's where you See, all you got to do to find out what God wants you to do is find out two things. What makes you cry and what makes you mad. And when you find out what makes you cry and what makes you mad, then you're, you've narrowed down to what God wants you to do. He wants you to fix the things that make you cry and the things that make you mad. That's, it's just that simple. And so, but we have to be able to trust God because we can't do it. And it's the same thing. And people, you'd be surprised. I mean, just normal people. You know, that's the funniest thing I hear when people say, you know, you're just a normal guy. 